Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm Kushan Joshi, and I work at Mapbox as a front-end developer. And I also have worked on ID Editor as a Google Summer of Code student, and later on helping Brian with some of the things. And after that, I started working on OSM Cha, the front-end, as a front-end developer. And I've also worked on Tufix, if, uh, if you've seen Tufix. And today, I'm going to talk about ID Editor and how can we improve the performance using multi-threading. So before we jump in, let's break down what actually is happening when you are editing an OSM map in ID Editor. So if you, if you look at what, what is happening behind the scenes, so this is the breakdown of ID Editor when you're working on it. So as you can see, the 64% of the time is spent with JavaScript, which is basically computing and figuring out what to do, and then 15% is rendering. And HTML is not even there because ID is very, very JavaScript intensive. So as you can see, there's this major chunk of 64%, which probably is the place where we can improve. And if you break down the JavaScript processing of ID Editor, this is the breakdown of what actually JavaScript is doing. And 42% of the time is just figuring out the vectors and SVGs. But there's this 27% time where ID is actually trying to parse the XML, which is the OSM standard for data. So I was curious about how the ways we can improve this 27% and you know probably figure out different ways we can reduce this number. So yeah, it's, it takes 25% of the CPU time. So what are the solutions where we can you know, reduce the time? So we can just stop parsing the XML and just, just not talk about the problem. Or recently, uh, I tried out different ways where we can defer the parsing. Since parsing is the least important thing, we would rather want to focus our CPU time on the user, the mouse, and an interactive event so that it feels more snappier. So we can probably defer the parsing of XML so that when user is not doing anything, we behind the scenes quickly parse the XML. But it had some problems. And so what, what is the other way that we can figure out? It's looking into the CPU. Like, as you know, every CPU right now has multi-core processors. And probably that is one way where we can figure out how to improve the parsing. But JavaScript is a single-threaded uh, language, as you know. Like, it doesn't support multi-threading. But recently, in the web world, we have a new thing called Web Workers, where you can offload a task to another thread in your browser. And most of the browsers support it. And parsing is one thing which can be easily offloaded to a separate thread, because it doesn't really involve in anything related to the UI. So it's, it's something, it's like a black box where we can defer it to the separate thread. And the main thread in ID can simply ask for what is the past data. And the result would be it would improve the response time and alleviate some of the pressure on the main thread. So the main thread can do more things, like talking to you guys, or taking the input, or saving your chain set, while the separate thread processes the XML behind the scenes. So, so there are some problems with this approach. Obviously, uh, it's not perfect. So the web workers are designed in a way they do not support the DOM and XML. So there's no DOM parser in the web workers. So there, there's really, uh, like this was designed by the browser so that it doesn't interfere with the main thread. And ID wasn't written to be executed in a multi-threaded environment. So at, back in 2012 and 13, it wasn't really, like nobody thought that we can probably run JavaScript in multiple threads. So these are the problems that me and Brian are trying to figure out. So I, to circumvent the problem of parsing XML in a separate thread, I created a library called OSM Bizly, which parses the XML by not treating it as an XML, but just treating it as a string. It only understands the OSM XML and not any other XML, so that reduces the problem statement, so we can just focus on the XML of OSM. And it tries, to, with this reduced problem, it tries to give a really, really impressive performance on paper. 
So these are the different passes that I tried it out. And as you can see, the osmium and the, it, it's, a, it's a bit faster than the osmium, which is the C, C library. And it's, it's, it's half as fast as, it, it's twice as fast as the ID, uh, the native XML parser right now. So how does it actually work? So, so the way it works is it treats uh, every line as a string. And since it can assume, it, it, it assumes certain things so that it only targets the OSM XML. So we pass it by line by line. And whenever it encounters an entity, like way, node, or relation, it simply creates an JavaScript object, as you can see on the left-hand side. And the moment it encounters any attributes, so all the attributes in ID are simply in double co in XML are double quotes. So it simply starts populating the attributes, like this UID. And from that, it goes to the next line. If it encounters certain tags, which are the ND or tag, it can simply put them in, populate in them in the way. And whenever we encounter a closing tag, it simply starts a new object. So this is the basic idea behind it, so that we don't really have to rely on any sort of OSM XML parser. And the way it works is it just focuses on OSM XML. So that, that are the takeaways. So we can use multi-threading to improve the performance of ID. OSM basically is a new string parsing of OSM XML to overcome the limitations. And it opens the future possibility of offloading more tasks to the web worker in the future to improve the ID performance. Thank you. <laughs> Time for questions. Sure. Okay. As always, I only ask obvious questions. Um, why didn't you investigate your first option, stop parsing XML? Oh, it was not actually an option. It's just. <laughs> but but the thing is, it is not an option because it's completely possible to uh, supply JSON format uh, data from the. OSM API, and there's actually been work on doing that. It's just never been completed. So, yeah, yeah that is one option. But but in our domain, like how do we just focus on ID? We like so that is one solution because the OSM XML API hasn't changed since I don't know 2009 or eight. It's just there's a JSON thing. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. If you want, you want. <laughs> want to reply, just raise your hand so we can reach it. Yes, there are so yeah, it, it's a stop gaps till we get a JSON API, which would really what our web browsers understand really well. <laughs> yeah. So if you were to design your ideal format for the API, sorry, if you were to design your ideal format for the API to send stuff quickly in a way that you could read um, in a multi-threaded way, uh, what would you want it to do? I mean, right now I just think it's J JSON because J uh, ID anyway converts it first into a JavaScript object and then instantiates it. So there's just one heavy step, which is the DOM parsing. And since we are not mutating the DOM tree, which XML creates, it, it, it's just one redundant step we can probably remove. OK, and presumably uh, for this, you're only really interested in the read calls. You, you don't have to worry too no. much about sending um, um, whatever format it is back. I mean, when, when a user ch saves the chain sets, then you, we, we also would like, I mean, if to be consistent, it should be also. Sure, yeah. sure. Michael. Any more questions? OK, great. So. Would there be an advantage to write the um, um, XML or API processor in WebAssembly? WebAssembly? Yeah. Yeah, so WebAssembly is another way to really, really speed up things on the browser side. But the problem is WebAssembly is not really supported well with the browsers, and ID supports IE11. And so it's, it's, we have to really take care that uh, most of the, our OSM users are able to use the technology. So that's why uh, no WebAssembly right now. OK. There are questions? So, <laughs> thank you. So, if anyone has uh, any questions. Maybe a couple, sorry. 
uh, I'm still uh, experimenting with this, and right now I don't have the exact numbers, but yeah, I'll, let's see. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Okay, so thank, thank you.